So first of all, as I start with every image I'm editing, the first thing I do is I remove the blemishes from the model's face. I've already done a lot of blemish removal before this, but I noticed some extra stuff that I wanted to remove. After that, I create my frequency separation layer. If you are curious about what I'm using, it is NBP Freaksick. I can't really remember the name. But basically, it's a couple of frequency separation layer presets using different blending modes. And you can also add your own custom made blend modes to the panel. It just makes things easier for me so I don't have to keep creating layers and blurring and everything. So what I do is I create the frequency separation layers, I turn off the texture layer and I just work with the blur layer. I like using brushes because it feels like I'm literally painting <laughs> my subjects. So I sample from an area, get the color and then with a very light brush with low opacity and feel, I just brush over the layers to smoothen out the skin tones and remove any discoloration in the skin. It's a pretty extensive process and it takes time, especially with the way I do it, but I prefer it this way because it gives me the best results. I know some people use the mixer tool and some people just literally blur the skin, but I only, I majorly use the brush tool. Now this process alone could take me hours. I think for this particular image it took me about it took me about two days because I had other things I was doing obviously but like once you've done it the first time you want to take a couple of time off to come back at it, look at how it looks and be sure you didn't go overboard and be sure you really smoothened out the entire skin. There's nothing worse than half of the skin looking good and the other half still looking bad. <laughs> So I do under the eyes, I do the forehead, I do the cheeks, I do every single part of the skin except the eyes, the lips, and I try to avoid the eyebrow, but it's not always possible, so. So for some images like this one, I don't like walking on the nose with the brush because it usually has this weird discoloration like even with the brush I find it difficult to get it right so sometimes I usually just use the lasso to select the nose bridge and then just selectively blur it till it matches the other parts of the skin I usually target the highlights like the places with the extreme highlights just blur it out a bit So now I take the brush tool and then just go over everything to make it blend even more. As you can see the before and after, I have to do that eyelid a bit more. And yeah, I think that was all for frequency separation. So now what I'm trying to do is mask out the skin because what usually happens is because I use the brush tool, I tend to go outside the skin and it affects the hair and every other part of the image that isn't necessarily the skin. So I'm masking out all those parts that I don't want the frequency separation to show in. So it's just the skin that is affected. So now I'm dodging the image, basically making parts of the image brighter. And I usually use this method because it just feels easier number one and number two it's not as if i can mistakenly affect areas i don't want to because basically what i want to do is to brighten up the brighter areas of the image so i use the blend if option to take out the dark areas so i know wherever i brush over is just going to affect the bright parts of the image 
So for this particular spot on the face, I was having issues because I wasn't sure why it was looking distorted. But obviously, if I just calmed down to realize I put my blemish layer above my frequency separation layer, <laughs> it would have saved me a lot of time. Okay, I've corrected that right now. So I put the blemish under the frequency separation layer and that fixes everything. So as you can see how smooth her skin looks right now. It's so amazing. So I'm done with dodging the skin. What I want to do now is to make the hair shine even more. So it's basically the same thing as dodging, but it's just going to affect the hair. With my blend effect option and everything, I'm trying to target just the hair. So I'll make the highlights or basically those little shines, I'll say, on her hair even brighter. And then I just mask out areas I don't want the shine to come on. So I'm just playing with the blend mode to make sure I'm not affecting the colors. Oh, that was a nasty crack. <laughs> I've adjusted the opacity as well because I didn't want it being too bright. And I also go back to the blend of the option. It's always a back and forth with this with every image I edit. It's always a back and forth. So now I want to retouch the eyes. I'm basically going to remove the veins, make the white parts whiter. <laughs> basically I'm just going to remove every form of discoloration in her eyes. And then I'll sharpen it and I'm going to add some highlights and kick lights to her pupils. If you watch manga, Abi, if you watch anime, then you probably know what I'm talking about, like all those little white dots that you see in the blacks of people's eyes. So I'm going to try to artificially add it. Some images have it from the get-go. This did not, so I'm just going to add it myself. <laughs> So this is the point at which I sharpen the eye. I'm using high, a high pass layer. You can easily do that by going to filter, other than high pass. I also use the opportunity to sharpen the lips.
So I added an extra layer to this. A uh, um, solid color adjustment. And just make it white and I mask it to the eyes. Because I was trying to make the eyes really white and a bit brighter. So I just masked the solid color adjustment layer to the eyes and then adjusted the blending option and the opacity. As you can see, that makes a huge difference. So now I'm going to start with my favorite part of every editing process, which is the color grading. So for this particular image, I decided to use a gradient map as my baseline. And I use this golden color kind of like gradient map. I just look so it looks so good on her skin. I really loved how this looked. And if I was going for a for a bit more stylized image, I probably would have made this golden color a bit more prominent. But you see, you see soon enough that I reduce the opacity. Because obviously I'm trying to get a much more dreamy slash natural feel to this. So I just mask it to her skin so it doesn't affect other areas of the image. Remove it from her eyes, remove it from her lips and yeah. Once again, play with the opacity, play with the blending layer so it looks better. So what I noticed is the gradient map made the image or made her face darker. So I added the curves layer to kind of brighten just her face. So I would copy the um, mask area from the gradient map and move it to the curve. So I'm just making her skin, her face brighter. So it just makes the skin a little bit more golden. So right now I want to remove some of the wrinkles on her cloth because they were very distracting. So I created another frequency separation layer which I know is probably not the right way to do it but I was lazy at this point and I just wanted to do it the quickest way I knew how to. Obviously you could use the lasso tool and selectively pick out the ring holes and then merge it with other layers but for crying out loud this was just easier. <laughs> so I'm removing the ring holes by selecting tones or color from other areas and just painting over the wrinkles to smoothen it out and this took a while <laughs> So now I'm just going to create an extra frequency separation layer just to smoothen it out a bit more. So it doesn't really look too obvious <laughs> that it was ironed in Photoshop. <laughs> So 
So this is where my own color grading starts. This is just a general color grade. So it's going to include the model and the background and everything. Just kind of like setting the mood for the whole picture. So this one now I'm going to be adjusting the selective color to affect just my model skin. So what I'm going to adjust now will not affect the background, it will just affect her skin. So this is more of like a selective color grid. <laughs> So now the color balance is going to make the actual tone of the image. So this is going to affect everything and it's going to make it look either cool or warm depending on what you want. But for this image, I think I wanted a cool image. Still had to create some sort of color contrast. So for the shadows, I kind of made it, made it to be to be warm whereas the highlights is a lot more cooler added some more color balance okay so that one was just for the skin so i'm making the skin a bit more warm piling on the contrast so this is where things start getting a bit more interesting So the reason why I've turned all the groups to a smart object is because it makes Photoshop run faster the more layers you pile on. So I add my personal presets. This is what I've been using for probably over a year now. I keep making slight adjustments so I have like different types of that same preset. And majorly I just adjust the vibrance and the clarity and stuff. But I add this to all my images, especially to the ones I post to Instagram, so it has the same, similar look, similar vibe. I'm going to be making it have this dreamy slash bloomy effect, and I really love this. So at this point, it feels like it's all done. But what I usually do is I wait for some time. Like literally after every step, after coloring, after co um, light adjustments, I always take time off from the image to see how it looks, see what I can add, see what I can take away. For this particular image, I, I needed to add some more things to kind of like emphasize that dreamy effect. So I took some overlays and I added it to the image So right now I'm just playing with the color, the light, the blur and everything to kind of make it feel much more integrated with the image.
And so what I, what I wanted to do here is for some of the out of focus elements, I wanted it to feel like it was actually in the image. So for some of the railings, I'm removing it from the front. So it looks like it was behind the staircase. It just makes the image feel a lot more authentic. <laughs> I don't know if this is going to make it look authentic or not, but it just makes it feel like it was actually there, like we actually created the effects. So some of them are in front of the railing, some of them are behind the railings. But I don't just stop there. So what I'm doing now is the same way I added the dreamy effect or bloom effect to the actual image. I'm adding it to the overlay to kind of like blur it out a bit more because I didn't like how sharp it was looking. So I blurred out the entire thing to make it just look like kind of like cutting candies floating in the air. <laughs> So now for a general dreamy effect, I'm adding this to the entire layer and I just reduce the, op the opacity. that's pretty much the whole thing done. You can see where we started from and where we ended. <laughs> 